like to call this meeting of the Plaquemines Parish Council, serving as the sole governing, governing authority of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District, to order at 3 o'clock. All right. Can we please do uh, roll call? And please let the record reflect that uh, everybody is, is here besides Commissioner Gooey, who is recovering from surgery. All right. All right. It's a good segue into our prayer. Please stand. Commissioner Russo, would you like to lead us? Let's pray. We take this moment to acknowledge Almighty God and thank Him for our bountiful blessings, especially for the parish's natural resources. We give thanks to God for our brave and courageous men and women in our military who daily risk their lives to protect our precious freedom and we pray for our world leaders to know how to obtain world peace. We pray that this government body comprised of both council and administration will always serve our parish with honesty, humility, and equality to all. And as this government body gathers here today, we pray for the wisdom to know right from wrong and the courage to do what is right. Amen. Amen. Right. After me. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. All right. Rolling down the agenda, please, Ms. Barb. Item number two, there is no executive session. Item number three, status report by the executive port director. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Madam Vice Chairman, and members of the board. I am Sandy Sanders, Executive Director of Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District. Follows as my Executive Director's report for the reporting period of 29 January 21 to 24 February 21. During this time frame, the port staff met with Senator Vitter regarding the Point Celeste Pump Station. Joining us were John Helmers and the Parish President, Mr. Kirk Lapine. The pump station is in dire need of replacement of the four pumps and all the housing and arterial support. It is estimated the price on all the equipment is $20 million. It is the primary source of drainage on the citrus property land and a must have for future port development. Today there is an introduction and a suspension of the rules for a resolution whereas the port is seeking approval by the, by the board to apply for state port priority funds for the purpose of constructing a booster station near the Alliance Refinery to provide water to the venture global development. To be eligible, the port must own the asset. Any engineering costs will be paid by the port, but we would receive construction funds where we would have to pay a 10% match. It is estimated that the total cost to be approximately anywhere from four to $5 million. Not only would this benefit Venture Global, but the surrounding communities as well as the, as well as the Plaquemines Parish government. We are working closely with Inframark and PPG to accomplish this much needed service for Venture Global. On a parallel basis, we are also um, going after capital outlay funds as well. Lastly, I would like to recognize the Deputy Port Director, Mr. Paul Matthews, for his appointment as the GNO Inc.'s Next Gen Council Chairman. This is a group of upcoming professionals who are below the age of 40 that work within the 10 parish wide areas. As last year's Vice Chairman, Paul restarted the familiarization tours of all the parishes, and Plaquemines was the first to be illustrated. As the Chairman, he will be a guest on two boards, that of GNO Inc. Main Board, as well as the Soul of South Louisiana Super Region Committee, which is made up of GNO Inc., Baton Rouge Area Chamber of Commerce, and the Bayou Region, which goes by the name CELAC, Southeast Louisiana Economic Commission. Mr. Chairman, subject to your questions or comments, this concludes my report. I have none. Calling uh, questions from the board. Kogovich? Yes, uh, two weeks ago at the audit committee, they we reviewed the audit on the port. They had 10 observations that he had found that wasn't being followed. And I asked the question, do they follow anything? And he said, it doesn't seem so. And 
none of, nobody from the port was at that meeting to answer any questions. So I, I don't know if y'all have had what you had. Um, as far as the follow up for the internal audit, I'm not aware of any of the recommendations that he provided that we are not currently following. I know that the internal audit that he did a follow up from was uh, performed in 2018. So a lot of the issues and comments and contracts that he did comment on are no longer valid. And that was my response to a couple of his observation that we no longer have this contract. So the recommendations that he were he was providing was specific to those contracts. So I, I had nothing to comment or I couldn't elaborate on um, our current status because those contracts are no longer uh, open and valid. But I am not aware. I have not received any feedback. Um, he did email me and state that he was doing a follow-up and it was due by a certain date. Uh, that follow-up, all of my responses were returned to him by that deadline, and I have not heard back from him since I uh, responded to his follow-up. So I am not aware of um, any issues that there may be, but um, or you know any non-compliance. Um, but I'm sure Mr. Duke is aware of if if there are any issues, our our doors, our books, our records has always been open. And if he has any issues, he's more than welcome to contact me and, and we can work together and, and investigate those issues that he's having. But I have not received any uh, correspondence from him regarding those that follow up audit. All right, thank you. All right, Russell? Uh, yes, um, Mr. Sanders. In your uh, executive report, you stated that you all had met on the site of the Point Celeste pump station, and I think we all agree that there's a pump station needed there. Have you all developed a plan of action? Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to reach out for the capital outlay as well. We're, we uh, also talked with uh, Senator Bitter about that, and uh, uh, I have also let the lieutenant governor know that that is a needed item. And we're going to scramble and do everything we can to try to remedy that. And in the next item, you had mentioned that the booster station, you'll be applying for port priority funds? Yes, sir. And uh, the port would have to own that? We have to own it to be able to, to apply for it. And so um, in the direction that it seems that we are heading, since the port is going to be owning these uh, infrastructure items, uh, is the port willing to take over and construct the Point Celeste pump station and own it as well if it gets those grant monies? And if it does get the grant monies for the uh, booster station, uh, the port is going to maintain and operate those systems as well? So now they'll be in the drainage business over there? Uh, I, I think that should probably be an item for further discussion. I'm not opposed to it, but I'd like to look into it more versus just saying yes or no right here. So y'all haven't developed a theory and a thought about if we own it, what we're going to do with it? I, I'm sorry, say that again? You haven't developed the theory and idea about if we own it, what are we going to do with it? If you're going to apply for the money, it seems like you probably should be thinking about well, when we if get we it. Well, if we own it, we'll do. maintain it. But we're also looking at um, <coughs> possibility of investors putting money into that as well and making that part of their investment. Are uh, you speaking of Venture Global? No, sir. You're talking about the Point Celeste pump station. Yeah, well, it's my understanding that the Point Celeste pump station is critical to the basin that Venture Global will be located in, as it, well it as is. the water. Yes, booster sir. The station is critical to pumping water to the southern end. Both projects. Uh, You're right. So uh, we've had this discussion with Venture Global in the past about their contribution, and uh, if there's something new that developed, uh, please share it. No, sir. You're saying you have had a conversation with Venture Global? Well, we have had this conversation in the past with Venture Global representatives and asked if they would be interested. And this booster station particularly has been an item of discussion for several years now. And, you know, we do have enough capacity to service Venture Global from the Bell Chase plant and its expansion. According to Inframark, it's needed to be able to boost that and 
for their construction. So if the parish cannot fund it, I'm going to do everything I can to try to assist. And I appreciate that, and I'm happy to hear that. I'm just thinking uh, a little further along that if you get the grant and you say that you're going to own it, is the port going to maintain and operate it? And that'll be a less of a burden for the government to have to maintain it. Right. If we own it, we'll have to maintain it. Okay, so you yes. agree to that then? Well, yeah, we'll do a management agreement with them for Mark. But, yeah, if we own it, we'll, have, we'll be responsible for it. And the pump station the same? If we own it, we'll have the same responsibility. Okay, thank you. If we own it. Yes, sir. That's good. Mr. LaFrance? Yes, Mr. Sanders. Yes, sir. Dealing with the PLT property, how are we moving forward with the, uh, the graveyard site on that, on that property? Well, um, we know that tall grass is uh, also, they have not completed their environmental with it. Uh, we have been talking with tall grass uh, about the possibility of getting uh, a uh, an ambassador from that area, from Ironton, to be part of any discussion we have so they feel that they are part of any uh, progress discussion of, of that project. So they'll be more informed. And if they say, hey, we'd like to have a, a meeting in the church, you know, we'll, we'll do that. We're just trying to be attentive to their needs. Okay. Uh, looking at the names of the people, uh, some of the uh, ancestors, uh, I believe Reverend Johnson and Reverend Brooks are two of the ministers that families that they are descendants from from that area. Reverend Johnson and Brooks. Yeah, yes, Reverend sir. Johnson and Reverend Brooks. I just want to let everybody know that this is not nothing new to Louisiana. Many of the plants that's built along the river has been built on plantation. Presently, uh, there's a plant, uh, Garyville Marathon, and there's a graveyard in Marathon in the plant that they have isolated. And still today, uh, people are still being buried in Marathon, in that, in that graveyard site. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know. Yes, sir. And, and uh, let me reiterate what I said last time that uh, we, we would hold that sacred. Uh, we plan to memorialize it and safeguard it. You know, it's, it's our heritage. And, uh, and again, talking to the, the folks, to the ambassador, we, we want to get their, their thoughts as well. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Sanders, are there ways to do that without reducing the capacity of the project? Sure. Thank you. Sure. Heritage and industry can can live coexist. Thank you. All right. Uh, are there any other questions before moving along uh, from the audience? Good afternoon, Mr. Henry. Please state your name and address for the record. Oh, Henry, Belshi. I look. Oh, you didn't have a meeting a couple of weeks ago. But man, it's been on my mind. You know, I came down there four weeks ago. Mr. Matthews, I stood up for you. <clears throat> stood up for you, sir. Stood up for you. This graveyard with tall grass, I want you to be able to maintain that and keep that straight for the people, man. I'm going I'm to I'm hold, hold you to that, Mr. Matthew, for the people. For the people of Blackman. You know? I want, I want to see that done correctly. Involve the community. When you involve the community, you'll get the community on your side. So that, that's another plus. It's not nothing negative. Not nothing negative. I want you all to do that. And Colonel, congratulations on your accolades from city business. Thank you. Thank you. And regarding the cemetery, we're in violent agreement. All right. Any other questions? Moving along. 3A, financial report, budget to actual. On February 11, 2021, when the um, last board meeting was 
supposed to happen, I issued um, the 2021 original adopted budget binders along with a financial report as of December 31st, 2021. Um, I, it was my mistake. Those binders were left in you guys' spots in Bell Chase, and I'm not sure if you all have received your uh, financial packet, but I will make sure tomorrow to visit the chambers and get those binders to you guys. Um, in the meantime, the 2021 original budget is posted to the website. Um, if you would like a digital copy, they have been sent out to all of the libraries as well throughout the parish. So they are available for the public. Um, so you do not have a report in front of you today, but I do have some notes regarding that report that I will get to you. Um, the port has remained in compliance with its budget policy, which states amendments and adjustments should be made within budget categories with 5% or more unfavorable results. We currently do not have any budget categories that have a 5% or uh, more unfavorable results as of, and we're speaking as of the 12-31-2020 budget um, versus actual. Um, I would like to remind everyone the 2020 budget performance reports and um, and total budgets that I will provide to you is not the final figures. I, we cannot really issue the final figures until the year in audit has been completed. But they will give you a very good idea of how we would how we ended the year. Um, in the financial reports. Um, as of 2021, with our new budget policy we adopted, you will now uh, find a month in cash balance report. Um, so you can see where our cash balances are um, at that given time, uh, because a lot of um, a lot of people question as far as our, our different accounts and things, and that's not the same as the actual budget performance. So I have begun to include the month in cash balances in the financial reports, as well as a summary report. Um, Mr. Roussel asked for that. It's very similar to the budget summary that is issued in the budget binder. So I will begin issuing that as well each month to give you guys an idea of where our restricted and unrestricted balances are. Um, I would encourage the board members to contact me if you have any questions once you receive uh, these financial reports. As I stated, it's a, it's a um, snapshot in our performance status of how we ended the year 2020. Um, and next month um, for our financial report, we should start reporting on uh, 2021's actual activity. If there are no questions, that concludes my report. Thank you, Shane Brown. Commissioner Russo. Yes, uh, Mr. Brown, the um, next meeting you will give us an actual budget to actual report for 2021 to date of a certain date. Maybe yes, sir. February, February, at the next meeting. Yes, sir, because the January meetings, I mean, the month wasn't closed out. So, yes, I'll start the 2021 at the next meeting. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? All right. You're not moving along, please. Number four, bids and advertisements. There are none. Number five, introduction of ordinances and resolutions. Mr. Chairman, we have three. Thank you. For Commissioner Blink, a resolution authorizing the acceptance of proposal for providing actuarial services for the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District for a period of one year with the option to renew for two additional terms and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. For Commissioner Newberry. A resolution authorizing Maynard Sandy Sanders as executive director of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District to extend the current consulting agreement with Ladder and Bloom and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. For Commissioner Roussel, a resolution of the Plaquemines Parish Council acting as the sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District, authorizing and directing the initiation of litigation related to the proposed Bell Chase Bridge project authorizing and directing the port chairman, Richie Blank, to engage special counsel for such litigation and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Mr. Chairman, that is it for our introductions. Thank you, Ms. Barb. Moving along. Item number six. Ordinances and public hearings pursuant to Article 6, Section 6.01E of the Plaquemines Parish Charter. There are none. 
6B, a resolution authorizing the port director or his designee to negotiate, sign, execute, and enforce the attached lease agreement between Plaquemines Parish, Port Harbor and Terminal District, and Plaquemines Parish Government. Commissioner Blink, we do have some changes on this item. Okay. Would you like me to read the changes now? Absolutely, please. Okay, in the preamble, um, on line one, we're removing the word negotiate. On line two, we're inserting exhibit A. On line nine, we're removing the word new. On line 15, we're removing the word negotiate. In line 16, we're inserting the word exhibit A. And on the lease agreement, we have changes on page one. Under section two, we're in, inserting. Wait, let me make sure I have the right. However, Lisi may terminate this lease at okay. any time by a simple majority vote by the Plaquemines Parish Council acting as the sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and General District. Right. On page two, under section four, we're removing lessor will pay all charges for electricity and water services used at lease premises and inserting. For the first year of the lease term, lease C shall pay monthly $2,554 for electricity and water services used at lease premises. Each year thereafter, lease C shall pay 40% of the preceding year's total expenses of electricity and water services provided at 8056 Highway 23, Bell Chase, Louisiana 70037. Lease C may pay these expenses monthly to lessor. And I think that is it. That's it for the changes. All right. Thank you very much, Ms. Barb. Are there any questions? All right. Yeah. Offer. Mrs. Newberry, please. Offer and second. A second. Thank you, Mr. Konovich. Uh, who determined the monthly fee? And is that just on the port side, or is, are y'all paying for the whole floor? Have y'all had this discussion with, um, with, no. Never were part of the discussion. Um, I know this is probably a moot point, but, you know, y'all are our board, and y'all are going to do what you're going to do, but it would be nice if we could go over this together versus here at the first time when we get in in a board meeting but that's just for the record i was under the impression y'all were working closely with rennie burris on this say that again i, I was under the impression y'all were working closely with rennie burris on this our attorney was working with him but we have not seen these changes All right. I, I know when we first uh when I was first asked if I would go into the building, it was, we'll keep exactly what you pay. And that also included our utilities. But again, I know I'm probably, it's a moot point, but I would like at least the courtesy of seeing it. And uh, if, if we were not under the president board if there was someone else in there you would negotiate with them but again our relationship is you know just do what we say now you know how we feel commissioner black you kicked me out oh you're on yeah, Ms. Marcotte, can you read back? Because I didn't catch those numbers either. Um, what's the monthly rent it's it's changed to? It hasn't changed, 5,900. On Under Section 4, the monthly amount shall be $2,554 for electricity and water services used at lease premises. Each year thereafter, leases shall pay 40%, that's 40%, of the preceding year's total expenses for electricity and water services. Okay, and then a rent it, the rent itself? 5900 
number three. So okay, I got you. Thanks. So fifty nine hundred plus the twenty five hundred, which is going up. So eighty four hundred a month is what the port's going to pay for the second floor. I'm oh, sorry, the third floor, the half, three quarters of the third floor of that building. So the port's going to pay over a hundred thousand a year for the office space. I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't we be better suited if we're not going to use the Popage building for anything else to go back to the plan or the, the recommendation I made a while back is to just purchase the building? I mean, it's just a question I'm throwing out there and kind of getting, I know you guys haven't been evidently privy to these negotiations, so I'm kind of not starting them here, but kind of putting it to light, just so the public knows that the port's going to pay over a hundred thousand for for the rent of office space. Um, Mr. Black, do do you recall the price of that building? Yeah, before it was it was under under fifty nine hundred, and that was the cost the cost to sell that building. Did, did we ever get an estimate? No, I think, I'm not sure if that, if Randy, did you meet with the new guy that we hired, the council hired? And did they give you a recommendation on the Popich? Um, I think he, Todd, and the parish president are working through with that. There should be an introduction today at the council meeting for you guys to authorize and approve us to sign the contract uh, with Mr. Reshord. So you all will be receiving um, that agreement um, early next week, mid next week. So that's where we are on that. But I, I, I can't say whether or not he gave that advice to Mr. Epley or Mr. Lapine yet. I mean, I think the other agent before we had this one had discussed, I know with the administration, and it was somewhere between a million to 1.2. So, I mean, roughly in, in 10 years of paying notes, they would own the building. I mean, I'm just, I'm just looking for, like I said, I'm looking for alternatives to have an report pay a hundred thousand dollars a year for for office space. Um, it should just be the fifty. It should be fifty nine. Yeah, fifty nine plus twenty five hundred for electricity and water. Okay, yeah, or right, you're yeah, adding electricity and water. Yeah, I mean, I want to make sure because there was another space that was being leased which has been removed, and I just wanted to make sure we weren't saying that that was still part of the lease because it's yeah. I mean, look, and just for the record, I do want to say that I I did give. Mr. Rathburn and I have had some discussions with this. Since he's represented by counsel, I don't usually deal directly with Sandy. So I did deal with Mr. Rathburn. Mr. Rathburn said he had spoken to Mr. Sanders. So I understand his point about negotiating, but I don't want the counsel to think I just drew this up and threw it at you guys to just adopt. Yeah. And I'll go back on record and I'll, I'll leave it at this because like Sandy said, it's going to go where it's going to go. Um, my, you know, I, I still wish that we would entertain the option of, and, I, and I've had a conversation with the sheriff. I actually did a walkthrough of the Regions Bank, and they're moving their district to, district one uh, operations and lockup to uh, to that building, um, and, and they should be done by the end of this year. They'll be vacating the lockup. The parish has already vacated. Um, the old engineering and DA's building there. Um, so, I mean, we're looking at the ferry department, the, the, the assessor and the clerk of courts, the only ones left. Um, I thought that that location would be better suited for for the port um, and then have the assessor and the clerk, since we're not moving really on, on building 200, uh, moving them into Popich building and occupying the second and, and third floor if we're going to keep Popich. And I know the clerk's here and she has expressed mm -hmm. some interest in, you know, a long-term solution to a building. So that's all I have. I'm gonna leave it at that. Well, I'm in favor of moving some things around myself, uh, but uh, the truth of the matter is, you know, we have uh, an entity in a parish building that uh, there's not an active lease right now. We, we need to get that sewn up. Um, if you're willing to, you know, to do the legwork there and, and have those introductions, I'm sure you'd, you'd find the support on the council. 
No, I mean, I think the I think the leadership of the of the, of the port should should do so. Um, I mean, you talk about leases. I mean, I, I I know of multiple entities that don't have leases with the parish who are occupying parish buildings. Uh, the minerals department, a state agency, is one of them on on FL with a bear. Um, the uh, that's in your district. Yeah, it's in my district. I've brought it up to the administration multiple times. I've also brought up the lack of a CEA with um, the Women's Conservancy who's occupying a facility on the uh, government complex. Um, I brought that up for multiple administrations. So, I mean, you bring that up, I'm just letting you know that there are multiple uh, other agencies that, that don't have active agreements or leases. Um, so. All right. Commissioner Russo. Yes, uh, back to the matter that's on the agenda today. Uh, thank you, Mr. Buras, for reaching out and, and accomplishing what you did accomplish as far as the changes go. Uh, I think that uh, we shouldn't mislead the public by saying that it's uh, over $100,000 for rent because utilities are included in it, which makes up uh, a good percentage of this, and they would pay utilities no matter where they went. So the rent is $5,900 a month, and it does take care of uh, the portion of the the building that they're in, and I would ask that we move on. Are there any questions? I'd like to make a statement. I mean, I know we're not negotiating here, but I would like to take the expenses that we have put in that building, like the air conditioning and the plumbing, and then get reimbursed and at least subtract that from our this year's cost. Uh, let me say this. You know, time for negotiation for me is over. If we went back into a lease as private industry does, you would be responsible for all of the maintenance and all of the utilities. That's not how most lease works. That's what you think. <laughs> well, every lease that I've been in, if it's a major repair like the plumbing or the air conditioning, that would be on the landlord. We are the landlord on both sides, Mr. Sanders. And, you know, I, we keep going back and forth on this issue. And, you know, if, it really amazes me that we have to sit here and debate this issue. I, I mean, I'm not debating it. We, we are because you're telling said, you that if you are the landlord and we're leasing from you, major capital repairs should be done by the landlord. That's your opinion, and I appreciate that. Okay. However, I wanted to get my opinion out here because, like I prefaced everything, I know this is a moot point. Y'all going to make me do it anyway. Well, this is what happened. This was on the agenda prior to this meeting. The word negotiate was in there for the parish president to negotiate. So we didn't move on it because there was no negotiation prior to the vote. So in the interim between the last time we met and today, there's obviously been some discussion somewhere to get us to the point that we're at now. Whether you were apprised of it or not, I don't know. Like Mr. Buras says, he's the legal counsel. He is the one that uh, agrees with what we have today. And I don't know where the port attorney is, but we shouldn't be negotiating with ourselves to begin with, but we do. We find ourselves doing that on a regular basis, which does not provide any benefit to anybody. So, uh, like I said, I, I think that the rent is reasonable. I think that you should pay for the utilities. And to come at the last minute and say you want to credit and all of this, I think it's uh, really nonsense. But anyway, I'd like to see us move forward. All right. Are there any other questions from the audience? All right. Hearing none, call a question. All right. Vote passes. Uh, the two no votes, Arbor and Black. Uh, all right, moving along. C, a resolution authorizing the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District to dispose of disused movable property, specifically to dispose of a 2012 Ford F-250 utility truck on an as is where is basis, and in accordance with Louisiana statutes governing of disposal of removal property owned by a political subdivision of the state and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Like to offer? Second. Second by Cognovich. Any questions from the board, from the audience? Hearing none, call a question. All right, passes. Eight with one absent. One, please. 
6D, a resolution affirming support for continued efforts towards construction of a container terminal within the jurisdiction of the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. I'll offer. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, which one are we on? 6D. I'm sorry, I apologize, I'm wrong. Um, this one's going to be deferred so we can have all nine members present, please, Mr. Um, Chairman. All right. 6D is deferred. 6E, an ordinance to amend and is amended to approve con to approve contract with Mercury Public Affairs and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. And we do have a typo and a change on this, Commissioner. Second. Seconded by Cognovich. The uh, first change um, is on line 22. I'm sorry, on line 5. Change in the year from 2023 to 2022. On line 21, there's a typo on the date. It should be February 11, 2022. And then on the contract there are some changes on page one um, the date the second line the date should be February 11 2022 and at the end of that paragraph inserting should the contract be extended on a monthly basis said contract shall not extend beyond December 31st 2022 <coughs> on page three Under if to client, it's adding Kim M. Toops, council secretary, with her email address. Under section 14, uh, we're removing location of Baton Rouge and inserting Plaquemines Parish. And then on page 8, under contact information, it's inserting Kim M. Toops, Council Secretary, with her email address. Mr. Chairman, that is it for the changes. Right. Uh, Barbara. Uh, yes, ma'am. Back to page 1, February 11th. That was at the last meeting that we didn't have. That's going to be today. It's going to be February 25th. Oh, okay. 21 to February 25th, 22. Oh. And then I, I assume on page one of the contract, section uh, three under the term, the date would change to February 25th as well. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Newberry, mm -hmm. is the date going to be February 25th, 2022 also when it expires? One year. Okay. I'm offering with changes. I'll second. Right. Commissioner Newberry offers with changes, seconded by Rousseau. Are there any questions from the board? Staff? Oh, it was already seconded by Mr. Cohen. Oh. Right. Yeah. Offer with changes by Commissioner Newberry, seconded by Cognovich. Are there any questions from the board or from the staff? Uh, how about from the audience? Hi, Mr. Henry. Yes, to get a little bit of explanation to the public with this contract, what Mercury Affairs do, public affairs do. Uh, I'll let the administration answer that and give you a clear, clear answer. The public information, you know. Absolutely. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, uh, former Senator Bitter is our hired gun, so to speak, up in Washington, D.C. And uh, his, his background, his experience, has proved to be very valuable to us uh, in getting issues in front of our either delegation or in committees for either funding or wording, et cetera. Uh, so he, uh, we had him on a, a multiple year contract, but we're limiting it. And, and the amount? Sir? The amount? The amount of the contract? 
54, for, oh, the amount is 4500 per month. Okay. Yes, sir. Are there any other questions from the audience? I will be abstaining for a potential conflict of interest. Oh, uh, Commissioner LaFrance, I'm sorry. Yes. Mike, I just want to repeat what I said when David Vitter was here. Uh, due to the climate that they have in Washington, D.C., I don't see how Mr. Vitter can be effective as a, as a lobbyist uh, for our report dealing with the climate the way it is with the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, there is no partisanship. There is no bipartisanship. There is no partisanship. Well, I, so again, I, I, I don't see how he could be effective as a lobbyist for us. How you? Commissioner Russo. Yes, uh, I tend to agree with uh, Council Member LaFrance, but in an effort to try to work with the Port Administration, uh, who demands that we, uh, we do this, uh, I would like you to put this down on your notepad over there as an effort of cooperation. <clears throat> so I will be supporting this, but I do agree with Mr. LaFrance. And in a year, we will be able to tell whether or not the contract should be renewed. Duly noted. Any other questions? And the measure passes, uh, one no vote from LaFrance and an abstention from Blink. Okay, moving along to the next one, please. F, an ordinance to amend and is amended the Plaquemines Parish Port Harbor and Terminal District 2020 operating budget of revenue and expenditures and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Shambro, can you offer an explanation, please? Yes, sir. This ordinance is removing the a motion grant. In a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll offer it. Second by Cognovich. Um, this ordinance is basically removing the um, grant revenue and expenditures that we had budgeted in 2020 for uh, a number of different port security <clears throat> grant projects. Um, some of them were held up due to some um, environmental approvals, and those projects will start in 2021. So this is removing it from the budget so that um, um, our budget isn't uh, misunderstood as far as that we, when it comes to evaluating uh, what revenues we budgeted for versus what revenues we earned. So I'm completely removing those out. Thank you very much, Jim, bro. Uh, Commissioner Russo. Yes. Are these uh, items in the 2021 budget? Yes. They were placed in the 2021 budget in November. And so that uh, these are the type of items that don't roll over from year to year? Correct. Thank you. All right. Are there any questions from the board? All right. Any uh, questions from uh, staff or audience? Hearing none, we'll go ahead. Passes with uh, Commissioner Black out of the room for a moment. All right. All right. Motion to adjourn. Got one more. Oh, one more. I'm oh, sorry about that. Okay. The next item is under item seven. Introduction of ordinances where a resolution is being sought. 7A1, mm. a resolution authorizing the Plaquemines Port Harbor and Terminal District to prepare and submit an application to the Louisiana Port Construction and Development Priority Program for assistance in the implementation of a port improvement project, providing for ne the necessary documentation of the need of the port improvement and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. Yeah, I'll offer. Offered by uh, Commissioner Newberry, uh, seconded by Blink. This is for the suspension. For the suspension. For the suspension. Any questions? Mr. Black, this is for the suspension of the rules for the uh, priority, the port priority program. Yeah, thanks. Right. Passed with everybody in agreement. 
a resolution authorizing the Plaquemines Port Harbor Terminal District to pay and submit an application to the Louisiana Port Construction and Development Priority Program for assistance in the implementation of a port improvement project, providing for the necessary documentation of the need for the for the port improvement and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. I'm going to offer it next for a second. Offered by Newberry, seconded by Blink. And um, would the administration want to explain one more time the purpose of this uh, and the, the need for this? Program? Sure. Um, it was our intent to introduce it at the last meeting. That didn't happen. Uh, we don't like doing the suspension thing. But it's a, it's a priority, and we're losing time. So this gets us in the game as fast as we can to try to get this remedied. All right. I would like to add one comment that uh, and he, here it is. We have a you know a very large entity that's that's coming here to do business, and we're we're you know we're trying to find grant money to shore up the infrastructure to handle the increased capacity that that that's gonna that's gonna bring. I, I feel like uh, I, the analogy keeps popping in my head. It's like a, a McDonald's worker who's having to rely on welfare to 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 make it sometimes, you know. And it's it's unfortunate that we're having to um, find grant money, federal money, to prop up this infrastructure for this company. I, it would be it would be nice if they would they would help with these infrastructure needs uh, where there is going to be impact. And I do want to remind folks that uh, that in the uh, property tax is waived for 10 years on this facility, which would equate to $88 million per year to the local governing bodies. Um, all of the all of the taxing bodies in this parish only brought in like $68 million last year. It would be a, a, a tremendous boon to the economy, a yield. Rousseau? Yes, uh, you know, back to the original discussions that we had, it's my impression that the industrial impact fee that was placed on this facility was going to be able to be used for projects like this. Uh, it is an impact and it is a fee on the industry. And, you know, I'm not sure where the discussion has been with the administration and with uh, the port being separate entities. But my impression of all of this is that uh, we were able to be able to find funding, I thought, through the impact fee to help with the booster station. And I'm not talking about the pump station, I'm talking about the water booster station. It was my impression all along that the expansion of the Bell Chase water plant, which I also have on the agenda today to get an update on, was going to be able to move money from the Port Sulphur water plant to the Bell Chase area to take care of this problem or perceived problem. Because we pump water now from Bell Chase to Venice. I haven't heard anybody tell me yet that Venture Global is not going to be able to have enough water to utilize their plant. But obviously there's something in the mix that we haven't been briefed on, and I'd love to have a briefing on that to understand what's changed. And the impact fee as well, if there's some other intention of using that impact fee, then I'd like to know what that is. I cannot speak for the parish administration. I am simply uh, talking with the folks at Inframark. I know that they have been talking with the parish for six months, yeah, over here. Uh, and I don't know about the impact fees and the parish's intent on using that. I'm just trying to fill a gap on something that's needed. And, and Venture Global has requested this? Venture Global has not requested it. Inframark is saying that they need it, correct? Yeah, and, and Venture Global has. Well, Inframark is the contractor for the parish, and that's why I can't seem to understand how there can't be better communication between the contractor with the parish and this project and the administration. You can't act as if the contractor for the parish is separate from the administration. They should be all speaking with the same voice. But I'm going to let it lie and wait till we get to the item on the agenda to see if we can get some clarity into what is really going on because this has been going on for I years. Understand this your is not something that just popped up. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Commissioner Newberry. Yeah, um, thank you, Mr. Roussel. Um, you had some good points. Um, but I do want to say that we've had some meetings about the impact fees and we're looking at 2.7 to 2.8 million, which isn't going to be enough. So this 
applying for this program is definitely essential, but yeah, we do have, need more communication between the government and the port on this matter as we move forward with this industry. I feel like we're a little bit too late and why we wait. The question is, why are we waiting till now? I feel like we are being rushed. So, but it is what it is and we have to move forward. So I just hope we can move forward with this. Uh, let me just be clear. I'm not opposed to-, to I'm, not, I'm not saying you're opposed. Okay. Uh, uh, Konyevich, would you like to let Mr. Durr go ahead? You know, and y'all might not know the answer. Why they needing so much water? Is it to make cement? I can, if, if I may, I can shed a little bit of light on this subject. Uh, I've been working with Venture Global for some time now. Venture Global's original plans were to use river water straight from the river. That's what I was going to ask. Exactly. Uh, they will put pump stations out there in the river. Uh, as we well know, Murder Grove Marine was built by putting a dredge underneath Highway 23 through the culvert. They since denied Venture Global. That's what they were counting on. When Venture Global is completely up and operational, they'll need upwards of up 800,000 gallons of water a day. No, who denied them? So they were working on that with DOTD, Corps Engineers, and everybody else. It recently came about, I'd say recently in the last six months or so, that those permits failed. So now they've reverted back to a project that PPG apparently has been on the books, needing in need of the water lines going down, like y'all have said, to supply water down south with the new renovations to the Belchase plant. So just recently, very recently, they came to us and said, can you put anything in the pot, so to speak? And we started negotiating to find out what we could do to resolve the issue. So that's, that's how it all started. DG knew they needed the water, has been negotiating and to put pumps in the river and simply use river water, treated themselves just like Conoco does, I mean, P66 does, Chevron, and most of the other plants. But they were denied the permitting through DOTD and other folks to get across the highway. Yeah, who, uh, with Venture Global, are you working with on this project? Uh, off the top of my head, I can't give you a name. I hadn't spoke to them just recently, but it's been numerous folks back well, just, could you just email us some contacts so uh, we'll know who you're working with? The other thing is, you saying DOTD has turned down a permit for Venture Global to go under the highway with a dredge pipe? That's what I was told. Well, I, I'm using the dredge pipe as an example because they were going to temporarily, until they got the water they needed, they could easily put water through a concrete culvert and supply themselves with water and treat it themselves or put another culvert through Highway 23. But they were denied... Again, I was told, there's been numerous people being in the email. Well, I, I, look, without wasting any more time here, just would you provide us with some contacts so we can at least yes. ferret out what yes. really we're talking about? Yes, Thank you. And Mr. Durr, please correct me if I'm wrong here, but the West Bank water plant produces 4 million gallons a day. Venture Global is going to need 800,000 gallons of drinking water a day while they're operational and 1 million gallons a day during construction. Is that correct? Um, I'm not quite about your figures as far as what I know the Bel Belchus Water Plant will be able to supply the entire parish with water. They have a line size problem down to 16 inches in the Ironton and the, in the area we're talking. They want to put a 22, 20 inch lines with a loop with a booster station so they can adequately supply Venture Global and everybody else because they lose pressure if they, when they're going all the way down. Um, but Venture Global did tell me in one of the conversations that around 800,000. Now, that's both, I'm pretty sure that's both uh, Delta and Plaquemines LNG, mm -hmm. but and, they're both fully operational. And just for the record here, does it make sense to build a water tower as well? Because there are other projects that, that do need to be considered. The Mid-Bear Terry Sediment Diversion is going to have a lot of concrete being poured. There are, there are potential other future projects that are, that are in the tube. Or are we taking a half measure by just building a booster station? Should we go full bore, build a booster station and a water tower? So the next nearest water tower is in. Well, I don't think a, a, a water tower necessarily would, feed, would have their needs. The need is basically because they're going to go to potable water by it. That's what the booster station is needed for. The 20 inch lines would give you the volume, but the easy fix is to go off the river. You got all the water you need, you just treat it. But they seem to hit a roadblock with that. Certainly. Thank you for your help and time. Uh, uh, this is Newberry. I think that would be a question, though, for, for Inframark to answer. Well, to me, if CPRA wants fresh water, let them pay for another one. <laughs> Duly noted. Uh, Mrs. Newberry? All right. Roussel? I'm done. All right. Are there any other questions? All right. Hearing none, go ahead. <clears throat> And 
vote passes uh, eight with one absent. I'd like to move over to the uh, an approval of the uh, minutes from January 28th. So offered. Offered by Kognovich. I'm sorry, uh, offered by LaFrance, seconded by Kognovich. Any questions? <coughs> One question. Passes eight to zero. Kognovich offers the motion to adjourn, seconded by LaFrance. All in favor? And I'd like to close this meeting of the, as the Plaquemines Parish Council, serving as the sole governing authority of the Plaquemines Port Harbor Internal District to close at 3.56 p.m. Thank you all.